Deborah Kelly coming to you from the Marie Louise Trache Art Gallery at Wisdom House Retreat and Conference Center. As we enter into our 27th year of the gallery, we are so excited to bring to you the theme this year, which will be Women Artists, Diverse Voices. 2021 is going to be a fantastic year as we celebrate amazing women artists, with our first artist being Ellen Moon. We are also excited about some renovations we have done with the gallery. You will notice things look a bit different. So today, for the first time, we're going to bring to you our artist talk by video. We hope you enjoy this video, but I also want to encourage you to call and plan a visit to Wisdom House to view Ellen's work in person. Hi, I'm Ellen Moon, and I want to welcome you to my show here at Wisdom House. The show is called Translating Nature and its work in fiber and watercolor, two very different media, which I think I use to the same end. I've been working in fiber for a very long time, more than 60 years, as long as I can remember. And I've been working in watercolor for about 35 years. I started being interested in fiber as soon as I could pick up a piece of string. And when I was eight, my family, we were living in England, and at the school I went to, everybody, boys and girls, learned how to embroider, and I just loved it. And I've been doing it ever since. Paul Clay says that drawing is taking a line for a walk, and pretty soon my lines walked right up off the paper and became pieces of string that walked around and moved themselves and nodded to make three-dimensional objects. I went on to um, get an MFA in multimedia, and I started to make these objects being costumes that I could wear. And I would use the costumes to do seasonal rituals, uh, rituals that I photographed in the woods to make the seasons happen and the world continue. When I got out of graduate school, I realized there wasn't a lot of call for people who wanted to photograph seasonal rituals in the woods. And um, I moved to New York, and I had to make a living. So I started to knit and crochet jackets and sweaters that I sold at various boutiques in Manhattan, ending up at Julie Artisan's Gallery, which is one of the first galleries in the country that um, has art to wear. And I was <laughs> very excited about trying out new techniques. My jackets became more and more elaborate. And I remember once coming into the gallery and showing Julie a new body of work that was covered with ruffles and textures and fringes. And she said, Ellen, these are all very nice, but what are these jackets about? And I thought that was a really good question. I've been trying to answer it ever since. I think that now the jackets, these jackets that I have here, are pretty much about landscapes and elements of landscapes and particular places. And that is informed by my watercolor practice. beautiful places. I started painting watercolors because I wanted to document the, the uh, great scenery that I was seeing and to paint the big mountains and the ocean and the rivers and um, the Okefenokee Swamp. Um, but I never, I never really uh, felt comfortable painting the local landscape of Northwest Connecticut. The landscape here is very complicated. It's full of trees. It's like the hills are covered with broccoli. And, and in the wintertime, there are all these branches and things you have to deal with. And there's no big mountain to focus on. There are many folds and corners and, and complicated shadows. So that was, um, that was something that I found rather daunting. So in 2004, I decided I would conquer my fear of the local landscape and do a painting a day. 
um, of whatever I saw on my daily rounds in, in the northwest corner. And so I've been doing that ever since. I love painting outside. I love watercolors. They're so portable. They're flexible. Um, they're, of course, fluid. And you don't entirely have control over the situation. Um, the conversation between pigment and brush and water is so complicated that there are always surprises and some of them are good, some of them aren't good, but it's very exciting to paint in watercolor. And I love painting outside. When painting outside, I can't think about anything else. I'm just looking and painting and looking and painting. And that, for me, is an hour spent in a sort of meditation. Watercolor is my practice. Some people do yoga. I do watercolors. At first, I was painting just what I saw on my daily rounds. But over time, I have um, become more interested in returning to the same place over and over again and really exploring that place. In 2010, I started this piece which is 365 calendar days of the year um, in a field that I know and love very well. It's a field for my, in front of what was my parents' house, now my brother's house, and I live just down the hill. I wanted to explore this field, and so I painted small paintings. There is one for each day of the year. There are 365 paintings. It took me about five years to assemble the whole, um, the whole array, um, so I did not paint consecutively every day. It's sort of a survey of five years in the field. And in this, I am, I think, returning to my interest in seasonal rituals, this documenting the ritual changes of the of from week to week, from month to month, and from year to year. I'm interested in the effect that time has on landscapes. There's a Emerson quote that I liked, which is, to the attentive eye, each moment of the year has its own beauty, and in the same field, it beholds a picture which was never seen before and which shall never be seen again. And that just about says it all for me. My watercolor practice, I think, informs my jacks. Um, as I said, they're landscapes. They are specific places that I have been, things that I have seen, and that I have done watercolor studies of. Um, not that I follow uh, a watercolor study uh, exactly when making a jacket. It's always a conversation, this time not between pigment and water and brush, but between uh, thread and fiber and me. I start out a jacket, um, I knit the background on a knitting machine, and it's all white. And I lay it out, and I paint it with dyes, very much like painting watercolors. And then I embroider the heck out of them. Um, stitch, stitch, stitch is a ritual activity, and again, it's a kind of a meditative activity um, to, to, and to find the right kind of stitches to, to give the textures of the parts of the nat natural world that I'm looking at. This jacket is an image of the Okefenokee Swamp in Georgia. There are plants called golden club that grow right out of the water, and they look like millions of candles, a field of, a watery field of candles. So I tried to convey that. This jacket is Bonito Lava Flow, which is in Arizona. It's a volcanic lava field, which, to my amazement, has uh, plants growing out of black lava. And it was all very dramatic and wonderful. Here I've used various weights of thread from very fine to rather thick to, um, to
to play on, on to show some of the, their delicate parts of nature and the stronger parts. And here is a tide pool jacket of a particular tide pool on Isle of Oak in Maine. It's actually the uh, uh, southwest corner of Merchant's Head. There is a tide pool there. And I've provided some of the inhabitants of the tide pool. And again, I use many kinds of, of thread uh, weights, and I, I dye the threads that I use while I'm dyeing the jacket so as to get the exact colors of nature. I love color and play with color. Lately, I've been working on small embroidered pictures in which I am kind of crawling over the landscape at a very close-up range, <coughs> describing the dramatic events in the lives of the very smallest inhabitants of insects. Um, these embroideries, though small, contain many, many layers of stitches. And again, I enjoy the ritual of stitch, stitch, stitch. It is very soothing and comforting to do that. But I use all these layers of stitches to, to give depth to the image and, um, and to show the, uh, to hopefully show in a kind of static um, medium to show movement and activity. I make many uh, circles and, and lines, linear elements, which show the vibration of the world, of everything in the world, and how these small vibrations that occur in between atoms, Brownian motion, atoms bump into each other, and those small vibrations add up and up and up, and that's what makes our big, complicated, changing world go around. moments, I, I saw them with my own eyes. I was, I'm so struck and surprised when I see, for instance, a grasshopper leaping suddenly out of the field into the shadow, or, or a dragonfly emerging from its chrysalis, or when I went down to the pond near a nearby pond and I saw the ice was forming on the pond and a beautiful big beetle had crawled out on the ice and that was the end of his life. And those dramatic moments, they matter. I want to document them and, and try to convey the excitement and drama that I found in seeing them. I was asked if the current pandemic has changed my work at all. And in some ways, no. Um, plein air painting lends itself to social distancing. I'm very lucky I can continue to work as I have worked. There's nothing from st stopping me from going to the studio and going stitch, stitch, stitch. Um, it may be that it's important, I know it is important for some artists to react to our, our current circumstances, but I feel that my job is to is to portray the steady pulse of the changes in the landscape through these chaotic times and to, to show that the world goes on. They may not seem like very important shapes and they're not very complicated or compelling shapes, but there's, there's a lot of pleasure in painting these simple things. What I want to do with my work is say, say, look, here's the world. Here's a simple object in the world. Isn't it beautiful? And if I can't convey it to you by watercolors, maybe I can convey it through embroidery. And hopefully just to show, to show the beauty and complication of this changing world. I hope you enjoy the show.